نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل عقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر من اخلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین اللہم ارن الحق حقا و رزقنا اتباعا اللہم ارن الباطل باطلا و رزقنا اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Today we will start our discussion with verse 83 of Surah Al-Baqarah وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهَ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِخْسَانًا وَذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسَنًا وَأَقِيمُوا السَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّقَاةَ سُمَّ تَوَلَّيْتُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِنْقُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ مُعْرِزُونَ Allah says, And recall when we took the covenant from the children of Israel, enjoining upon them, Do not worship Allah, and to parents do good, and to relatives, orphans, and the needy, and speak to people good words, and establish prayer, and give zakah. Then you turned away, except a few of you, and you were refusing. Continuing our discussion of verse 83 of Surah Al-Baqarah, in the last four sessions, I talked about the first five commandments of Allah. To revise and repeat again, the first commandment was the first right of Allah on all the bondsmen and this was the right of the creator and our sustainer that we need to believe in the oneness of Allah. Now after the right of Allah, the rights of fellow beings, the second commandment was the topmost right, the first priority of rights, the first order of preference in our rights was what? The right of the parents, being kind and merciful to the parents. Now the third commandment was the next right, was the right of the relatives, the Zil Qurba, and this is what we talked about in our last session. Now the next two commandments, the fourth and the fifth commandment is وَالْيَتَامَا وَالْمَسَاكِينَ The orphans and the underprivileged, deprived people of the society, the have-nots around us, being merciful, being kind, being caring, being helpful to all the have-nots around us. And then Allah talks about وَالْيَتَامَ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ And the orphans, the orphan children, the orphans and the poor. This is what? This is what Allah is talking about. The underprivileged section of the society. This is where Allah is highlighting the rights of the weaker and the poorer sections of the society, the have-nots of the society. Being merciful to them. Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, Allah shall be kind and merciful on whom who is kind and merciful to others. And then Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, He will be deprived of mercy who is not merciful. So being kind to 
this deprived section of the society is extremely important hazrat anas radhiyallahu ta'ala and who reports that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he who fulfills the need of any of my people to make him happy you see there's a person who is fulfilling the needs of a deprived person why just to make that person happy the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says truly he makes me happy and he who makes me happy me means what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he who makes me happy in fact makes allah happy and he who makes allah happy allah will make him enter paradise so nothing short of paradise is being promised for a person who is kind who is merciful just to make one of allah's bondsmen happy there are so many words of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which would make us understand the importance of being sensitive about the rights of the widows of the orphans of the poor and of the needy hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in bukhari and muslim that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever whoever strives to relieve a widow a distressed and a needy is like the one in divine reward who does jihad continuously in the path of allah he is the one who fasts permanently during the day and like the one who spends the night in prayers now you see these three like continuously doing jihad and permanently fasting days on an end and making salah throughout the night without sleeping these are the things which no person can humanly it's not possible for any one of us to do but the person who is who will work or to strive or struggle to help to relieve a poor and a deprived will be rewarded by by the by the reward of a person who will be doing all this so you see our religion and the teachings of islam are not just about worshiping allah Islam is not just commanding us to say our salah to be to be fasting to be performing hajj or paying our zakat and sadaqah it's not just about that these all physical or monetary worships are you know actually what they are actually the means of training us of educating us to be the actual believers to be the actual mu'minin who are going to be who are going to be sensitive and who are going to be careful about the rights of their fellow beings like there's so many ahadees of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he talks about the rights of the orphans on all of us to start with surah maun allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says araita allazi yuqaddibu bid-din fa zalika allazi yad'u al-yatim have you ever seen have you ever come across a person who just rejects who just fails to accept the concept of the day of resurrection or the day of judgment he just doesn't believe on it he is the person who shuns on the requirements of an orphan who refuses to pay or refuses to help or support or be kind and merciful to an orphan so a person who is shunning the requirements of an orphan is like the person who is might not be actually rejecting and might not be actually not believing in the day of the judgment but he is like a person who is just not bothered about the day of judgment 
he by his behavior and he by his dealings to the orphans is is actually showing that he is just not bothered about the day of the judgment and about the questions on the day of the judgment has sahal bin saad radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu in narrates in bukhari that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that to ever suppose an infant belonging to his own or any other family will be as close to me in heaven as these two fingers are to each other and the narrator said that he put his index finger and the middle finger very close to each other with a little space to show how actually how close the caretaker and the supporter of this orphan would be on the day of the resurrection or in jannah with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allahumma ja'alna minhum allah make us one of them hasat ibn abbas razi allah ta'ala anhu reports in bukhari that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the bondsman who took an orphan from among the muslims and shared his food and drink with him allah would allow him to enter enter paradise provided that he was not guilty of an unpardonable sin one of them being polytheism finding partners with allah hazrat abu umama bahali radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in mustad ahmad and tirmizi that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if anyone stroke an orphan's head if anyone stroke an orphan's head doing so only for the sake of allah he will have blessing for every hair over which his hand passes and if anyone treats well an orphan girl or a boy under his care then the promise to the guardian is what again in these in this hadith he and i shall be like these two fingers in paradise subhanallah what remarkable reward has been promised to the guardian who cares and who loves an orphaned girl or a boy hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in ibn majah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he commented that the best of muslim homes the best of muslim homes is the home in which an orphan lives and he's treated in a loving and affectionate manner and the worst of muslim homes is the home in which an orphan lives and he's treated badly and harshly ill treating the orphans makes our house makes our home a bad home in the eyes of allah and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allahumma la taj'alna minhum hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in musnad ahmad that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a, pe- a person came over to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he complained to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he had a very hard hearted nature and he asked that what should he do prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam advised him to stroke the head of an orphan and feed the poor so this is what it is all about the have nots of the society the deprived of the society the underprivileged of the society to be aware of their condition to find out about their requirements to help them to support them is what will, will what will help us perfect our faith perfect our belief prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has made a, a huge promise Hazrat Ibn Umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a muslim is a muslim's brother he does not wrong him or abandon him and if anyone cares for his brother if anybody cares for his brother's need Allah will care for his needs if anyone removes his brother's anxiety Allah will remove from him one of his anxieties on the day of resurrection and if anyone conceals a muslim's secrets Allah will conceal his secrets on the day of resurrections similarly hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in abu daud and tirmizi 
that Prophet ﷺ promised, if anyone removes a Muslim's anxiety, Allah will remove his anxiety on the day of resurrection. And if a creditor allows respite to a hard-pressed debtor, Allah will make it easy for him in this world and hereafter. And if anyone helps a Muslim, keeps a Muslim secret, that Allah will conceal his secrets in this world and hereafter. And as long as anyone goes on helping his brother, helping his poor, his needy, his orphan, goes on helping his brother, Allah will go on helping him. Hazrat Abu Sayyid Qudri radiallahu ta'ala and who he reports in Abu Dawood and Tirmzi that the Prophet sallallahu said he who clothes a naked Muslim Allah will clothe him with the green garments of paradise and who feeds a Muslim he who feeds a hungry Muslim Allah will feed him with the fruits of paradise and a Muslim who gives water to a thirsty Muslim, Allah will give him the drinks of the extremely pure drinks of paradise on which will be an unseen seal. Hazrat Abu Musa Ashri who reports in Bukhari that Prophet said, feed the hungry, visit the sick and free the captives, you will enter the paradise. So the key to the entry of the paradise are the have-nots of the society. And there's a lengthy hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu reported by Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who in Muslim that the Prophet Sallallahu said that Allah had said on the day of the judgment Allah will ask his bondsmen what? On the day of judgment Allah will say to his bondsmen O son of Adam I fell ill. You did not visit me. The bondsman will reply, You are the Lord of the worlds. How could I visit you? Allah will say, Did you not know that such and such bondsman of mine was ill, but you did not care to visit for him? Had you done it, you would have found me with him. Then Allah will say, O oh, son of Adam, I asked you for food. And you did not give it to me. The bondsman will say, you are the Lord of the worlds. How could I give you food? Allah will say, weren't you aware that such and such bondsman of mine was hungry and begged you for food, but you did not give it to him? Had you given him the food, you would, you would have found me with him. And then Allah will say, O son of Adam, I ask you of water and you did not give it to me. And the bondsman will reply, you are the Lord of the worlds. How could I give you water? And Allah will say, didn't you know such and such bondsman of mine, such and such bondsman of mine had asked you for water, but you did not give it to him. Had you given him the water, you would have found me there. Meaning what? You would have found my blessings. You would have found my player. You would have found my bounties. You would have found, you would have gained my forgiveness by clothing, by feeding, by providing, by visiting the sick is the pleasure of Allah. Are we going to gain the blessings and bounties of Allah? Are we going to get to the mark of receiving the forgiveness of all the sins from Allah? And these are the keys to paradise. How, how much did the Prophet Sallallahu attend to this class in his life? There's an incident of Hazrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala and who that he was he was making tawaf that during the tawaf, a person came over and he talked something in his ear and he left with the person and there was a friend with him. He completed, the friend completed the seven circles and waited for Hazrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu to come back. And when he came back, he immediately asked him, that Imam, what was this? You were doing such a remarkable worship of Allah and this person came to you and he asked you something and you left this worship of Allah. 
and then and you and you went away with him what was the matter hazrat hasan radiyallahu ta'ala and who said that why shouldn't have i done it why shouldn't i have done it that is he came up to me with one of his requirements he was needy he was he was poor why shouldn't i have gone with him after finding out his requirement of help when i heard my grandfather muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying that i i would prefer i would prefer that i i go to help and i strive and struggle to help a needy a poor a widow an orphan i would prefer this to the worship i would do if i would do itikaf in the mosque of madina for 2 months my religion is just not about worships remember my sisters and my daughters our religion my religion this beautiful religion is not just asking us to worship day and night it is about the rights of our fellow beings we need to be sensitive and we need to be careful about and then caring and being nice and being loving and being merciful to the orphans i remember that story which i i read in a book prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it was his it was the day of the eid and he was coming back after his congregational prayers that he saw a young child sitting by the corner of a street a total unknown a total stranger wearing filthy clothes all his hair were all messed up and all filthy with mud but the child was crying the child was sobbing they could they could not be an event in the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he saw a person who was crying a saw a person who was upset maybe from one of his own family or maybe a total stranger that he walks off no it is just not proven in his sunnah he stopped by and he walked off to that child you just can't realize how busy how committed he was the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam being the head of state of medina being the army chief of medina being the chief justice of medina having nine wives having the families having expeditions having so so many things on the top of his mind and then this is the eid day so much to be done but then he sees a person crying he walks he walks to him and he asks him what is the matter the child just shrugs off his shoulders prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then kindly starts striking his head rubbing his hair gently and lovingly and asks him again he again asks him what is the matter feeling the loving touch of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's loving hand merciful hand he looks up into his eyes finds love finds mercy and kindness and he and he breaks into tears he bursts out into tears and he starts narrating his story he tells that my father died and my mother then remarried and took me to the house of my new father my stepfather kept me with him for some days and then he turned me out and look now i have no father i have no mother i have no brother i have no sister i have no house i have no food to eat i have no clothes to wear and he just bursts out in tears prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam hugs him close to himself and he feels the love and he feels the warmth of love in the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's body and he clings tight to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says to him oh my child oh my poor child would you want would you desire that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam be a father to you 
Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha, the mother of the believers, be a mother to you. And Hassan and Hussain, the leaders of the of the youth of the Jannah, be brother to you. He hugs the Prophet sallallahu tight. And Prophet sallallahu holds him and brings him to his house. And he talks to Hazrat Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha. And he asks Hazrat Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha to feed him, to bathe him, to clothe him. And then from there onwards, he stays with them as a part of his, their family. And the day the Prophet sallallahu death, he was crying. He was crying and he was saying, oh, my father, oh, my father. Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala who walks in. And he takes charge of this orphan boy. Remember, remember, believe you me that the society in which the orphan children are going to be dealt with this pattern of mercy and this kindness and this, this generosity will be a society where these orphan children are not going to turn into robbers and decoys and delinquents of the society. They are going to turn into the pious. They are going to turn into the God-fearing Muslims. They are going to turn into the scholars and the leaders of the Ummah. There's another occasion. Prophet Sallallahu goes to Makkah and in the streets of Makkah there is an orphan there's an orphan girl. She's the orphan of Hazrat Hamza radiallahu ta'ala and who, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu who was martyred in Uhud, the martyr of Uhud, his orphan girl. She sees the Prophet sallallahu rahmatullahi wa and she runs up to him and she, and Prophet sallallahu opens his arms and she, and she's lifted in the arms of the rahmatullahi wa and he holds her tight close to his chest and there you are, seeing this sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and previously hearing to all the words regarding the orphans of the Prophet Sallallahu we see that there are three companions, not one, not two, three companions of the Prophet Sallallahu who come up to the Prophet Sallallahu this time and they're asking, they're asking for the guardianship of this orphan girl. Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and who is saying, she is my paternal uncle's daughter. She is my she cousin. I have right over her guardianship. Hazrat Zaid bin Haris was Allahu ta'ala and who requests the Prophet sallallahu to put her into his guardianship, saying that Hazrat Hamza was his Muslim brother. And then Hazrat Hazrat Jafir bin Abu Talib was Allahu ta'ala and who he requests the Prophet sallallahu saying that she is his uncle's daughter and then the narrator says that Prophet Sallallahu gave her in the guardianship of Hazrat Jafir bin Abu Talib because his wife was the maternal aunt of the child also of this orphan girl also because after the mother the right is of the mother's sister so this was the remarkable revolution which took place these were the Meccans, these were the Arabs who used to bury their own daughters alive. And now they are fighting among themselves to, to be the guardian to an orphan girl. This was the revolution which was brought by the teachings of Quran, which were, which were brought by the words and the message of the Prophet And then about the poor and the needy, I would want to narrate in the end the incidents of the Prophet Wasallam. He, he thought and he planned and intended to buy a shirt from himself, for himself and he took eight, eight dirhams and with eight dirhams in his pocket he decided to go to the market to buy a shirt for himself. On his way, he saw by the side of the street, he saw an old, gray, white-haired old woman 
who was a stranger, a poor old woman whose back was bent sitting by the side of the street and she was crying. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could just not pass by. He stopped by this old woman who was a total stranger and helping this woman, being nice to this woman, being generous to this woman, supporting this woman would not, would not be of any worldly use to the Prophet ﷺ in whatsoever form. But no, it's not this world. It is the hereafter. He stopped there and he asked the cause why she was, why she was crying. And she came out with a story that her mistresses had given her four dirhams and asked her to go to the market and get a few things. But she had she's dropped that money and she's lost that money and she cannot find it now. And she started crying again. Prophet Sallallahu took out the four dirhams out of the eight dirhams which he had taken out to bring shirt for himself. And he handed her over the four dirhams and asked her to go and buy the things and get back home. He went to the market, he bought a shirt for himself on his way back with a new shirt in his hand. He came across a beggar who was not wearing a shirt and it was it was winter and he was not wearing a shirt. And you know what he was saying? Exactly the words of the hadith which I just narrated, just narrated that anybody who will who will clothe a naked person allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will clothe him with the green garments of paradise he actually himself was calling out the words of the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with this new shirt in his hand he handed over the shirt to this beggar and he was walking back he was walking back and he came over to the same point where he had met that old woman. He saw that she was sitting there again and she was again crying. I would stop here to comment that if if it had been any one of us, we would have definitely thought or we would have definitely said that she is a professional beggar and that she is a story maker and she is a fraud and she's doing it, creating it all over again to hook it up with another person. But then Prophet Sallallahu again went to her and asked the reason. And she said that, you know what, I dropped and I lost and I took a lot of time finding, looking for my coins. And now that I bought the things, I've taken too long. And now after taking so long, when I get back home, my mistresses are going to scold me and they might even beat me up. And at this old age, my old bones... I cannot, I cannot tolerate their harsh words, their scolding and their beating anymore. And that is why I'm upset. And that is why I'm fearing getting back home. The Prophet Sallallahu asked her, okay, I'll go with you. What baraka in his time, despite all the commitments in the world he had, he had time to walk back home with a poor woman. And he walks back with that woman to her house and he knocks at the door and he tells the mistresses the whole story and he asks them to forgive and they not only forgive, they set her free because the person who was the narrator, the person who was interceding was Rahmatullah Lameen. What, what luck. How lucky was this old woman. Allah may make us all of us, make, make us all of us one of those lucky people who will receive the intercession of the Prophet Sallallahu on the day of the judgment. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allahumma hasibna hisab yasira. Allahumma ajirna min nar رَبِّ ابْنِي لِعِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِي قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَحَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ الرَّحْمَةِ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَحَابِ سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ وَبِحَمْدِكَ نَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ نَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَنَتُوبُ عَلَيْكَ سُبْحَانَ رَبِّكَ رَبِّ الْعِزَّةِ أَمَّا يَصِفُونَ وَسَلَامٌ عَلَى الْمُرْسَلِينَ 
والحمد لله رب العالمين آمین سم آمین ان شاء اللہ کانٹینوئنگ آ ڈسکشن آف دا ورڈس نمبر تھرٹی سکس آف صورت النساء ٹمورو وی شیل بی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا رائٹس آف دا نیبرس دا رائٹس آف دا سلیوس دا کمپینینس بائی آر سائڈ اینڈ دا وے وی آر سپوز ٹو ٹریٹ دا اینیملس دا ڈومیسٹک animals we have i would uh, request all of you to keep on passing on these messages and sharing on all these uh, programs which are being broadcasted for you may allah subhanahu taala reward you with the best best reward here and hereafter fi amanillah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh